My name is Alfred Enoch, and I'm here with the wonderful film The Critic, which we are all representing, and I played Tom Turner in the film. Um, I'm Anan Tucker. I'm the director of the film and very happy to be here. <laughs> um, I'm Gemma Arterton, and I am in the film, and I play Nina. And I am uh, Ben Barnes, and I play Stephen in the film. Well, we were just sitting in the car on the way here, and Patrick Marber, our fantastic writer, said, OK, given that there's only seven story arcs ever in the world, which I can't even remember what they are now, <laughs> which one is the critic? And he went through them all, mm -hmm. right? What was it? Tragedy, quest, mm -hmm. comedy. Anyway, I said, oh, it's six out of seven, I think. And I got short shrift. It basically, according to Patrick, it's a, a, qu move, a questing movie, which I found interesting. But it's about a man on a quest to save his... Anyway, I don't know <laughs> is the answer to your question, I think. But it's also a bit of a love story as well. Well, yeah, in all way. seriousness, it's a love story, first and foremost, I think, between uh, well, kind of it, all, everyone in mm. the film. It's, a, it's an amazing ensemble piece in which all the relationships, a bit like a kind of dark version of La Ronde, everything, mm. everyone's feelings and emotions m matter in terms of how they affect and work across yeah. everybody else. And all your actions have consequences in the smallest of ways, in the mm -hmm. tiniest of details. And I think that's what makes it, I think, for me, a special film. Yeah. Ian plays uh, Jimmy Erskine, otherwise known as The Beast, who is uh, the most feared critic... Uh, uh, theatre critic. critic. of the stage in 1936 in London. He writes for uh, uh, a paper called The Daily Chronicle, um, which is the equivalent of, you can imagine, one of our great uh, English newspapers of old. And um, he has a secret in terms of who he, his true identity really is. Um, and it's something that if, uh, uh, is not accepted in that time. And how he navigates that, uh, his quest for uh, truth, beauty, um, things that matter in the face of a world where none of those things matter, where facts don't seem to matter anymore, where fascism is on the rise. Um, you know, and age. And he's fighting against time and events conspire to put him in a corner out of which he desperately tries to get out. And then bad things happen. So I play Nina Land <coughs> and she is a theatre actress. Um, and a kind of okay actress, known in the in the theatre world, um, very ambitious, very self-critical. And her hero is Jimmy Erskine, but he never gives her a good review. And it kills her. It's, it, he's her absolute hero, why she wants to be an actress. And um, she is, yeah, she's a complicated person. Um, and one day she gets a, an absolutely damning review from him and it's almost going to end her. And she confronts him, which we've all wanted to do at some <laughs> point in <laughs> our careers, haven't we? <laughs> going, Why did you say that? No, we don't read reviews. We don't read reviews. Um, but um, yes, and, and then a relationship forms actually between, uh, between the critic and the actress. Um, and it's Patrick describes it as a kind of Carice and... Um, Hannibal Lecter type of relationship. I play Jimmy Erskine's assistant, uh, Tom, who is, I mean, there's a professional and a personal relationship there. And that sort of ties into what Anand was saying about the, about the fact that the film in so many ways is a love story that internet interconnects the characters in a very profound and personal way. Um, so that relationship, the line of that relationship is a bit blurred. And ultimately, it's Tom's loyalty to Jimmy, which guides him and, and sort of, for want of a better word, defines his actions as the film kind of reaches the, the, the business end. In a weird <coughs> way, aren't you? Yes, which says, I suppose, <laughs> given, given what happens, is, um, shows the kind of world that we're, we're dealing with. Nuanced and complicated. Uh, yeah, I play uh, Stephen who is uh, a man, a married man, um, to the daughter of the editor of the newspaper for which uh, Jimmy writes, but he's also desperately in love with Nina Land, who, uh, and, and they've been uh, having a, uh, an illicit 
affair. Um, and I think, you know, m much like uh, it was all of the characters, really, there's this kind of disconnect between where their lives are and, and where they would, how they would wish them to be. That kind of struggle, I think, exists for for all of the characters, these sort of this sort of battle of, of ego and and heart, really. And um, uh, I think there's a real sort of purity to to, the, to that character and the way he goes about things, aside from the affair that he's having, obviously. But um, uh, <laughs> but I think I think that's what makes the character so interesting is that, that is that they all have this kind of like pull to do the right thing um, and and the sort of pull to. to towards their, their desires, really, which makes the, the world so intriguing. The twist, of course, is that um, Mark Strong, who can't be with us because he's shooting in uh, uh, Hungary, I think, um, uh, is also secretly in love with you. And... Who is him? And <laughs> happens to be Jimmy Erskine's proprietor, uh, who uh, is going to get rid of him. You know, I think when I kind of started out, I got some savage ones, and I actually, but actually, I've sort of reclaimed them to be. A, we talked about this a bit in the rehearsal process, but I've reclaimed them, especially when I'm working with like much younger actors. I'm like, do you think that's a bad review? That's a bad review, mate. <laughs> and I've shown them, and it actually, it's, I find it very empowering now because you know I got some like savage ones back in the day, and and uh, and they sit with you. I saw a documentary once with um, Robert Redford and, and Paul Newman, and they could remember word for word. The, the worst things that had ever been said about them, and I'm the same way. I can reel off two or three that that would just make make me feel sick. But, <laughs> but, but the point is, you don't, and you don't remember the good, and we, that's that's an adjustment mm. we need to make in our heads because everyone is always going to have an opinion, especially with Twitter and um, mm. you know doing deadline interviews. Every, you know, everyone's <laughs> gonna everyone's gonna have an opinion always, and to to release yourself from from the the fear and the weight of your concern with that and know that you could be proud of yourself regardless mm -hmm. of what other people think is mm -hmm. such a like powerful theme I think just in 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 life whether you're you know whether you're a nine-year-old student or retired or an actor very much in the public eye it's the same so um, you remember the worst thing anyone's ever oh said about God. your acting? Um, <laughs> not that I'd like to share and relive publicly, <laughs> but um, oh, so you've got to reclaim it. You've got to reclaim it. it. Actually, I'll tell you what. The, probably the worst review I ever had, or the most crushing one, um, was my father's an actor, and he came to see something I did when I was at university, and uh, I had this feeling that it maybe wasn't so great, and I came out, and he came to the first night, and he was standing in the sort of atrium of the theatre. And I sort of waved at him as I came out through the door. And he just grabbed me by the shoulder, dragged me aside, and said, gave me a bit of a dressing down. Um, and gave me his very forthright thoughts about my performance and, and, and gave me a lot to ponder over the next few days. I mean, I think the difficulty with reviews is finding a balance. As Ben says, you remember the bad ones. Do you know what I mean? They impact you, and you can read 10 good ones. I mean, I used to have a relationship with it where I would read them, and I would not be satisfied until I found a bad one. It was almost like the thing, the thing that mattered was finding the bad one. That's the truth. You're picking, at, so the, picking at the scab until you... Exactly, yeah. and that sort of, that's the challenge, to, to establish a relationship with your own work that enables you to engage it and not define yourself or not use it to express your own insecurity, self-loathing, whatever it is. So it's how do, you, how do you find that balance where you can take that opinion on and still take on the, the positive ones as well and give yourself a more balanced view. But also criticism can be given with such love. Some of the most sort of creating, most loving sort of creative moments in my lifetime have been people giving constructive criticism mm -hmm. to me, whether it's about music or acting or whatever it might be about, saying, I don't think you, you're ready to do this, or, or, or actually the way you're going about this could be a little more thoughtful or, or, or whatever. And you, you can give that with love. It's just the problem is when it becomes very much like in our film about the ego of the person writing it. And I do think that I was kind of reclaiming those worst ones to make them a, a, a joke is actually kind of mm. a Jimmy positive in the film thing. Wants it, it infuriates him when people aren't, because he can see that Nina mm. has it. And what drives him crazy is that she's not accessing it. It's a bit like Alec Ferguson, manager of Manchester United, who did nothing but rage and, and bully his young charges uh, and wouldn't put up with 
anything that wasn't the best of what they could give. And that's what fires, I don't know, Gemma, you, what was your, there's some moments in, this, in the film where yours are my favorite moment. I think that, do yeah. you wanna speak to that? Yeah, yeah, he, um, <coughs> she goes around to his house after he's given her this absolutely god awful review and, you know, soul destroying review, where, which she confronts him about. And, they, and she asks him, what can I do? And, and he says, you just need to, you need to do less. You need to trust that the audience can see and feel your innermost thoughts and feelings without you having to express them. And you have to trust that we're with you, which is such a good note mm. for me. <laughs> I think to myself, that's hard to be able to trust yourself. But at the same time, it's such great criticism that. And she does get better after she has that sort of piece of advice from him. But it's also that he really sees her. Yeah. That isn't it? I mean... I mean, I think there is... With Jimmy, there's... Uh, he enjoys being nasty mm. about people as well. I mean, there's... He's, you know, th he could say less. It, mm. it, he doesn't have to go the full way, you know, and they'll have a speech where I kind of go through the things that he's said over the years of me, which are completely... Um, contradictory at times, like I'm fat and I'm too thin or I walk badly or I'm too graceful or, you know, all of these things. Um, and that's where Jimmy's a, you know, he's th that's why he's the beast because he really lays into people and enjoys it. But then actually the truth, when he meets her and they get this connection, mm. the, it, that's when he gives good review, actually. Mm. I'm um, still looking for the critic and I've got a m pistol in my back pocket not that I hang on to any grudges, <laughs> who said of my very first film, this film stinks worse than the Venice Canals in the height of summer. Oh. I'm still standing. Yeah. Yeah, so it's all right, isn't it? Oh, man. I, I think it's a completely unique film in that it's quite hard to define what it is. And genre-wise, it's as, as you said, it kind of crosses over so many things. I'd love for them to be moved, actually, and I'd love for them to laugh at... Um, but uh, but it's a very it's a very ba like it's baffling in a way this film it kind of takes you to places that you didn't expect so it's a surprise I don't really know what I want them to get from it but um, that's my thoughts I, I think like with honestly uh, pretty much every project I've ever been involved with even though this is a, 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 a like Gemma says a very intriguing somewhat befuddling tragic dark story in a lot of ways I would hope that people would take away any hope that they can see in it. Uh, I think that's always my, that maybe that's just my defining characteristic rather than, oh, rather than, <laughs> rather than one of the actual story, but to, 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 to be able to like scratch off the surface layers and, and see, and see, and see the positive and the hope in it would be my, would, would, would always be my wish for someone watching uh, something I've been involved with. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's quite good. I mean, I, I, I hope people, Thanks yeah, I, I know I like that. I was just thinking that really kind of, that of review of that my, chimed. of yeah, my Yeah, there we go. I'm trying the to question. give you the positive yeah, yeah. criticism, <laughs> which, which we all, which we all respond to. Um, no, I, I, I think it will be, a, I haven't seen it yet, but I think it will be a very entertaining <laughs> film. Um, should I not have confessed that? I'm too honest. Um, but no, I think it will be very entertaining, but I hope, Beyond that, it gives people pause for thought and encourages them to reflect more deeply, be that about the similarities between that time that's, that's reflected in the film and the time now, or their relationships with the things that they love and to what extent those relationships are constructive or other, otherwise. I think it's really interesting, Gemma, what you said, talking about that meeting, because when there's a meeting, when there's an encounter, that's when the criticism becomes constructive. That's when that dynamic changes. I think that's really... Seeing the person. Seeing the person. So I hope people manage, in watching the films, to see a bit of themselves mm. in some way.